Round one. Fight. <laughs> What's going on, everybody in BW Sports One World? It is your boy, The Lion, and we are here with another episode of Combat Zone. That's right, powered by, as always, Elite Performance 765-499-1005, where the dream of elite fitness becomes a reality and also rogue energy. That's right, it is the official pre-workout supplement energy drink of BW Sports One. Check it out, rogueenergy.com. Text or put B, BW Sports One in as that promo code to get your awesome discount. And Turp House Clear, check out turphouseclear.com for all your CBD Delta 8, Delta 9 accessories and products. Now, today we have some special uh, guests in here with us. They are the owners of Match Point Connection. We have Nick and Brian with us today. How are we doing, guys? Thank you for joining. Doing great, man. Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't talk, don't everybody talk at once. I know there was kind of a, they were looking at each other like, who's gonna go first? <laughs> now, thanks again, guys. Nick, I appreciate you reaching out to me and uh, getting this interview going. Um, Absolutely, man. Happy to be here, brother. So we'll start with you, Nick. Kind of give a, a little background of who you are and what what kind of uh, investment that you have in the sports world, I should say. Oh, man, I've been in combat sports now, shit, close to 12, 13 years. Uh, started training with uh, Rich No Love Clemente back in the day. Uh, had a bunch of fights here and there. I uh, actually fought again, came out of retirement, had a fight two weeks ago. Um, now I am the co-host of the Fight Sport Focus podcast, one of the largest uh, media for the Gulf Coast MMA uh, and most fight scenes here. Uh, we have a pretty large following on social media. Uh, we have a huge following on Spotify. And right now, uh, I've been, I'm on the Louisiana Boxing Commission, so I've kind of moved more into judging and refereeing. I've refed on bare knuckle. Um, now, uh, I'm working with this company, Matchpoint, where I'm the liaison between all the fighters and the company, Matchpoint. And I'm sure uh, Brian will get into that uh, here in a second. Awesome. So really quick, I just want to say, when you ref that last fight, between O'Bannon and Kalmus, how was that? Just having that front row seat. Bruh, in my opinion, that's arguably one of the best fights Bear Knuckle has ever put on. Um, you know, I'll say it on your show, I, like I've said it on every other show that I've done. <clears throat> it wasn't a fucking stand at eight count. That was <laughs> a shit of fucking nine count. Because uh, at my angle, Zach was laying on those ropes. Like, he was laying down on the rope, so I ruled it a knockdown. Bobo walked back, and uh, I'm glad I made the right – I think I made the right call there. I'd make that call again. Uh, and it gave Zach a chance to get up, and that dude's a warrior, man. Like, he's going to be an issue for people. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I definitely can see that uh, Cal must taking that heavyweight division by storm in BKFC. Brian Oliver, let's give everybody a little background – on your entrepreneurship and awesomeness that you have going on with you. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. But uh, so uh, born and raised Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I played a little football in high school, a little bit in college. Uh, then I went on into, uh, you know, the, the service industry, a little bit of, in sales. Um, and I found a, a healthcare company about 15 years ago. And we had, um, we, we, we built a, a nationwide platform uh, to help out people that were uninsured, underinsured. And so um, I'll just kind of leave it at that. But point being is, is by the end of 15 years, we had aggregated about 120 million members nationwide and we're the largest uh, in the world at what we did. And so when I left that company pre-COVID, um, you know, I was looking for different investment opportunities. Never in a million years that I imagined that I would end up working uh, again, another 60 hours a week grinding away, building another company. But I tell you what, I, I'm having a blast doing it. 
Uh, we've got an unbelievable team. And um, and so I, I, I definitely want to tell you uh, as much as, as you need to know here today, uh, but just very, very excited at this opportunity and, and, and it, it to be uh, to be working with uh, with bare knuckle as well. So, yeah. So let's talk about this company, Matchpoint. Um, great. A great concept from what Nick has told me. I want you guys to kind of explain what brought you to this point here. What was the deciding factor of you guys getting together and saying, hey, you know, the industry needs this. We're going to give it to them. Uh, we'll start with you, Brian, on that. Sure, sure. So I met with a guy by the name of Henry Hayes. He's the founder of Matchpoint about seven months ago. And, and as, as I was telling you before, I was really looking more for investment type opportunities. But when I sat down in that conference room and he was he was putting the idea in front of me, I'm like, man, this this is a is a such a great concept. And and so uh, basically what it does, guys, I mean, the, the concept was was originated from I mean, I'm sure you guys are familiar with NIL name, image and likeness, which is about to hit the collegiate sports realm uh, starting in July one of this year. Uh, and so. When, when when I heard about this, and this is kind of a, uh, it's a virtual agent platform that allows small business or brands to match with talent. So in the case of Bare Knuckle, it would be the fighters. Uh, and we know, we know that uh, the fighters are out there. I mean, they're giving it all they got and they need, you know, as many endorsements and opportunities as they can get to build their brand um, and, and, and as many different ways to make money. Uh, they're in the ring, they're, they're getting beat on. Uh, they're training for months at a time. Then they're then they're recovering for months at a time. We we thought this would be a great platform to not only use in the NIL's collegiate sports realm, but I wanted to carry it over into other uh, categories uh, in the sports industry. And that's where I lined up with uh, with our mutual friend Rich Clementi and Nick Sherlock, and and uh, we met with the owner Dave, um, and and he loved the idea, loved the concept, and. Um, so, and, and, and um, I, I want to be, I want to be careful not to announce it before, before David does, but, um, so we, we're, 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 uh, ready to, to handle, uh, and help all the fighters and bare knuckle, um, uh, fighting championships. So, well, that's awesome. You know, obviously I never got to the level of where you guys are at now in the fighting world, but, you know, as an amateur fighter back in the day, I mean, it was all on you to get every bit of money that you could, not just in the ticket sales, but also, you know, any type of sponsorships that you could come up with. Um, Nick, kind of go into that a little bit. I know that, you know, you have much experience in the fight world with different fighters, management companies, uh, organizations and such. How does this differ from where we were five years ago even? So what Match Point is doing, man, is it's taking a lot of the grind time, a lot of the just picking up the phone or having a manager just calling people and just trying to sort out sponsorships for you. It takes all the match work out of it because you're on your phone. I mean, you're on your phone how many hours a day anyway? All mm -hmm. you do is you get on the app, you link it to your social media, and you build your profile. You're like, this is what you like. This is the things you're into. And then it matches you. You know, you can see, like, I match 96% with this one. Then they can – everything's done through the app, so it takes the ease and the stress of trying to find sponsors away because it's all through your phone. It's through the app. You're not making phone calls. You're not beating the pavement. You're not going door to door. You're not just trying to get friends of friends to sponsor you. So once you're in the app, everything's ease, man. It comes right to you. Well, let me ask you real quick, Nick, I'm, I'm going to stick with you on this. As far as, you know, you say your fighter goes on there, sets his, uh, his account up on match point and tells people or tells the app what they like, he or she likes. And that's how, correct me if I'm wrong, that's how these uh, sponsors, potential sponsors come on to their profile. Is that correct? Kind of. So they go on there and they build a profile and then these mm -hmm. brands also build profiles. Okay. And then it matches you. It's kind of like a match.com kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, and it matches you according to uh, certain parameters and algorithms and it sees who you best line up with and who you'd best want to work with. Okay. All right. And uh, Brian, what kind of brands and businesses are on there currently? 
So we have everything from restaurants. Um, we've got uh, spas. We've got uh, again, we're doing some uh, some specific uh, reach outs and splinter programs for bare knuckle. Uh, we want to do maybe some some body grooming uh, companies. We want to do some tattoo artists. We want to do you know, um, you know energy drinks. We want to do you know those sorts of uh, apparel brands. Th those sorts of uh, categories. We want to make sure are available to all the fighters because we know that's where their niche is. That said. Um, you know, when, when we have been meeting with the fighters, whether it be at tryouts or the, or the matches, uh, and, and, uh, maybe even weigh-ins, um, we're going to be, we're going to be asking them specifically, what, what are some, some companies, some brands that they are interested in? And we can actually go out there, uh, because we're on the onboarding phase right now, we can actually go out there and we can find whoever they would like to work with. And we can put that together for them. But to Nick's point, um, we want to take the negotiation out of the hands of the fighters. We want to put it in a Rolodex to where based upon where they live, uh, their hobbies, what they do for a living, all of that stuff, it's going to go into a four factor algorithm algorithm, and it's going to match them right up next to uh, a company or organization or a small business um, that is looking for um, a, a, a fighter in order to endorse or promote. So now I got to ask, you know, your focus is a lot on small business, which I love, obviously. What would the just a normal average uh, rate for these companies being a small company again? You know, they 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 don't want to spend or they may not have the ability to spend thousands of dollars uh, yeah. with with sponsoring. How does that help these smaller businesses and companies gain that that traction within sponsoring? So, so we actually feel like our wheelhouse is not going to be in the, you know, uh, five figure deals. Uh, we're more based upon quantity. Uh, and so we want to put together multiple deals for all these fighters. And so uh, we just ran a, uh, a couple of pilot tests with a, uh, with a bar and grill and a restaurant in New Orleans, Louisiana, for example. And they, um, they sponsored, uh, sponsors the wrong word, uh, in, endorsed. Uh, social media influencers, and so I can speak on behalf of the uh, the bar and grill in in New Orleans. They paid a hundred dollars for a social media influencer to go in there for a couple of hours and put together a little skit, a little video. They tagged the bar and grill. The bar and grill tags them. There's there's a synergy there. It works for both sides. Hundred dollars doesn't sound like a lot of money, but if you go if you if you knock down ten or twelve of those deals, you know. You, you got your money, um, and 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 that's that's really kind of how it works there. Um, but there, I'm not saying that we are not going to have you know a a thousand dollar deal, a two thousand dollar deal. We may get you know two, three, four years into this thing and have a, a ten, twenty thousand uh, dollar deal right. available. So so uh, sky's the limit. Um, but we just don't want to limit ourselves to saying we only want to do these big deals uh, because I've spoken to multiple fighters. Uh, just since we entered this partnership and they are up for anything you 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 put an endorsement in front of them They want a part of it and I want to give that opportunity to them Well, Nick this question is going to go to you then uh, as far as these management companies are concerned Where did they stand with match point coming in? Uh, what do you mean? well as you know some of the well, most of the reason people sign with managers is because they are told, you know, sponsorships will come through the management company, this, that, and the other. Uh, taking this away, I guess, taking that out of the 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 picture, I guess, um, and giving this, well, I don't the, think, it, I don't think giving them the platform to do it. Well, not yeah, necessarily out of the, the picture. picture. Um, but what it, I think what it does, it still benefits the fighter because if Match Point is out there wrecking shop and getting these guys endorsements and creating uh, greater revenue streams for them, your manager has to work harder for you. He has to work harder to be of value to you. So at the end of the day, it still benefits the fighter. Which that's what we should be wanting to do is benefit the person who's putting their lives on the line, giving us right. the entertainment that we see on TV. Now, and I'm wholeheartedly agreeing with you on that. I guess let me rephrase my question. So match point, as to your point, will eliminate 
all the laziness in the management community. I I mean I think it should. I think I you know I personally I think it's a good check for them, but I also I I, I think we're going to work hand in hand with the managers. Um, I don't necessarily think, and I've spoken to many professional athletes. Uh, a lot of times, their managers or their agents they don't want to get up out of bed for a deal that's you know a, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. They don't they don't want to waste their time on that necessarily, or or lower. Um, but th that again, may, we believe that's going to be our wheelhouse. And, um, and so we want to, we want to enable them to, uh, and again, it's a Rolodex guys. I mean, uh, you're going to have, all you have to do is open your app, your, uh, the app on your phone, and you'll be able to just swipe up and see a list of all of the, the, the businesses that are interested in endorsing any type of influencer all over the country. And so, I mean, that versus a manager or agent picking up the phone and calling around, I mean, that gets pretty mundane. Um, so we, 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 we want to try to, to uh, streamline this process for anybody. So kind of like what you said, it, it, the concept of match.com where you swipe and you, you know, well, I don't know if it's that one, but whatever the, the app is where you swipe right, tell, swipe tell, left. Tell, if tell, you tell like. the profile, Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't had one of those in a long time. Uh, but so on the app, and I'm just trying to tell everybody how this works. So you swipe, you see these uh, businesses on here. You swipe up or swipe a different way if you don't want to uh, necessarily see those again, or if you're interested, you swipe this way or whatever. Or you click something. Is that how it works? It, it's it's more it's more. Uh, uh, Nick mentioned it earlier. It's more like a Match.com, but but specific to uh, matching businesses and talent versus you to your future wife, whatever it may be. So in other words, you've got a Rolodex, you've got a list of matches that best fit and, 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 uh, synergize with the, your profile. So based upon, you know, again, your hobbies, do you like to hunt fish? Are you a fighter? Um, what are, what are some of your other interests? How you filled out your bio? Where are you from? Where do you live? All of that goes into the four factor algorithm. And so when you pull up the app, it's got to Nick's point, you know, uh, you are a 97% match with Dick's Sporting Goods, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And, and, the, and it just keeps going down the road. And so you can just scroll up and you can pick and choose. And look, hey, here's another little interesting feature. The fighters can actually actually pitch the businesses. So it doesn't necessarily, the fighters don't have to wait on a business to pitch them, which can also happen. The fighters can, with the click of a button, they can make a pitch to the business. And now all of a sudden they're in front of this business that they wouldn't have otherwise called and said, hey, for this, for X number of dollars, I'll be with, willing to mention you on your, on, our, on your social media while I'm wearing your shirt and I'm driving around on an ATV, whatever the case may be. Okay. I mean, I love the concept. Don't do not get me wrong one bit on that. I love your guys' concept with this. I think that it will elevate uh, more so for the fighters in, in the long run. And again, like I said, that's who we all want to support because those are the guys and girls that are going out there and putting themselves at risk for us and our entertainment. Absolutely. What is you mentioned this is already in the collegiate area. Uh, what type of feedback have you gotten? from the college athletes or, or college, uh, I don't I don't know how much I can say, and I don't know the legal Zoom on everything as far as when you're dealing with college athletes. So I don't know what all you can say and what all I should ask, but I want to leave that kind of in your hands. Sure, yeah. And actually, uh, just a, a little small correction. July 1 will be the first day uh, wherein it will enter the state of Florida. And there are also four other states, five total July 1 as of now, that that could change by July 1. Louisiana, for example, I just saw they passed the bill, so they go on to the next step, and, and some of that stuff just takes some time. And so, um, but it, it, as far as what we've seen, I mean, again, we, we, can't really, we can't really broach that subject until it goes legal. Uh, but everybody that we've spoken to and talked to, and this is, I mean, anybody that's listening can go on and Google NIL. It's everywhere. I mean, the, the, it, we, seven months ago, you might have a story about NIL come out once every other month. You're getting one a week now. So this is, I mean, this is for the first time in, in collegiate sports history. I mean, this is going to change the game, right? 
Um, so, but we're hearing nothing but good things. This is going to give the athletes an opportunity and a platform uh, to make money off of their name, image, and likeness, which I, I think we can all agree at this point is a long time coming. So, I would agree with that, and that's what it kind of was segueing into the next question as far as the legalization quote unquote, of the collegiate athletes being paid for their likeness. Um, not necessarily, you know, if you wear a jersey, if, say if you go to Alabama, it can't have the logo on it, but you can make money off of the color jersey of the same That's time. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as this goes, as far as the, the universities themselves, in that aspect, have you guys talked to universities and seeing what their feedback is with the assumption of the athletes becoming paid soon? Yeah, absolutely. We have. We've talked. We've talked to a few of them, and uh, and and actually, in in our backyard, LSU being one of them. You know, I think we're to a point. If you would have asked me that ten years ago, you know, nobody wants to talk about it. Let's 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 kick the can down the road. But now, they they know the writing is on the wall, and so they really have no choice but to accept what is coming, and they have to welcome it. Uh, we've even talked to. Um, um, I've got to be careful what I say here, but point being is, is we've, we've spoken to the, uh, to, to multiple colleges and, um, and they're excited at the opportunity. Uh, they're just going it, to, it is a wild west scenario where in some of these rules and regulations, you'll probably see evolve over time. Uh, right. but you may, you, you, you absolutely, your analogy was correct. You cannot wear, um, uh, an, uh, 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 an Adidas shirt. Right. Uh, with the school name and colors when they are a Nike school, you know, right. so there will be some restrictions there. But uh, I think I think uh, the opportunities that they're, that they're going to have versus what they haven't had, I think we're I think we're in the right position. So, so guys, other than the combat sports world, what other sports can you see or have you seen this uh, elevating in? Well, I mean, we're the social media realm is a big one, right? I mean, you've got, you've got. We talked about. We had a meeting the other day uh, with, uh, I'll just say, a car dealership. Um, and while they may not necessarily be geared towards, um, you know, fighters or combat sports, there is a, you know, an eight-year-old cello player up in New York that fits their, you know, demographic, and so. This eight-year-old cello player has got, you know, two, three million followers on her social media. And so, you know, do you think that may be of use to a brand trying to improve their, you know, revenue or followers on social media or whatever the case may be? And, and so you're, you're going to see uh, the social media realm is huge um, because you've just got everybody's got a platform now. And some people have really mastered that. Um, you know, they've got they've got you know, two, three, four million TikTok followers, uh, you know, and so I, I think we're going to really try to, th these businesses are really going to try to harness that. And look, everybody had a horrible 2020, the pandemic. I think, I think small businesses is looking for a way to make a comeback and, and uh, this will be a good platform them, platform for them to use. So, so now would it be a, kind of like a bidding war between the different brands and companies on there with, with certain athletes, or is it, the, the company comes on, says, you know, here's what we're looking for. This is the amount that we have. And then it kind of filters to the different athletes. How's yeah, how does it, that work? The businesses won't be able to see what the other businesses offer. You know, gotcha. we didn't want to create this, you know, uh, crazy, you know, like you said, bidding war. Um, so each each offer is specific to each each offer from a brand or a talent is specific to that deal. Um, and, and, and we, yeah, so now there's, there's ways for them to communicate by, uh, via app. So, you know, um, if, if for example, the, the brand offers the talent, uh, the, the car dealership offers the fighter and the fighter says, well, look, I'll do this, this, and this, but I want it to be for this amount. We have a chat function in there and they can, in a way counter, uh, okay. the offer until it makes sense for both sides. Gotcha. Now on the athlete side of things or the client that we should say, do, do they get access to see everybody else? Do they only get access to see their profile and all the companies? Yeah, at any point, uh, either side, they can click on a person's profile and they can they can flip through it and they can see the bio. They can they can kind of drill down a little bit. They can also see 
Uh, we've got a social media component in there too. So they can also click on the person's social media. It'll redirect them to their social media so they can kind of flip through that. We've got some interesting uh, and neat bells and whistles coming out wherein we'll be able to, um, you know, a business, for example, will be able to tell um, the, the social media interaction of their followers, uh, which would, of course, make that deal more valuable, if that makes sense. Um, so absolutely, we're we are. Um, it, it's it's an evolving application and uh, we're really excited about what's coming down the pipeline. Well, I honestly think that you guys are nailing this at perfect timing with the collegiate athletes becoming to, you know, getting ready to be paid and all that. Um, it is definitely a great thing for any combat sports combatant, uh, combatant in, in the industry because of, like we said earlier, you know, those lower, the lower tier, the amateur, the lower tier professionals that are just getting into their pro fights. They need something like this, and especially if they don't have a quote-unquote good management company around them or a good manager agent, they lose potential profitability. Um, and starting a career like that is never in a good essence. So to give them that little jump up on the competition, this is a great thing. Now, Nick, I know you're you're making this you're making this show beautiful, but I got to bring you back in a little bit. I got to get to the conference. <laughs> What other sports, well, not even what other sports, but how far, Nick, do you think that Match Point can go once it drops? I think the beautiful, the beautiful thing about this company is it doesn't have a ceiling. Mm -hmm. This is going to be able to transcend uh, once it really gets going in the next few years. Uh, and I think all athletes from all sports and all walks of life are going to be able to use this app to accelerate their careers and their lives and their revenue. Now, as far as outside of the sports world, has there been any talks, discussions internally and, and say what you can and if you can't, that's fine. Moving into different industries, not just sports realm. Yeah, uh, that's you one name of the things it. that uh, Brian was talking about. That, that was one of the things. No, Brian I'm sorry, Nick. I didn't interrupt. Um, media influencers. Right. But I'm saying like yeah. other industries as far as. You know, if, if somebody's looking for a job, you know, they have ZipRecruiter, this, that, and the other. Is this something that could be potentially for them where, you know, these companies are already on there? Hey, we're looking for a salesman, not necessarily an influencer to come in, but hey, we're looking for a salesman or hey, we're looking for this, that, and the other. Can you see this evolving into that somewhat? I've spoken to our founder multiple times about using this algorithm in just that way. So not necessarily from a marketing aspect, but also just simply to match from one to the other. But uh, I think you make a great point with uh, with people looking to hire and, and so forth. Um, but that, that'll that'll probably be a little bit down the way. Uh, we'll need to create and, and build uh, divisions within the company in order to do that. But we'll have the platform already in place in order to just simply concentrate on different verticals here and there. Gotcha. Okay. Well, guys, I appreciate you coming on with me today. Uh, we'll have to get rich on here for part two. Uh, you know, we got to talk to no love at some point. Nick, <laughs> again, thank you for bringing you guys together with me. Brian, nice meeting you. Do you guys, either one of you guys have any type of uh, closing statements, uh, shout outs, representation, Now's your time. Brian, I'll start well, with you. We are gonna be <laughs> I'm just joking. Nick, go ahead, man. No, Nick. <laughs> we are gonna be at the uh tryouts in Belfast, New York this weekend. Uh come I'll have a booth up there. Come on by, say hi, meet some of the guys. Uh as always, you know, I'm on a Fight Sport Focus podcast, and we'll see you at the fights, man. We might have to have a uh a, a conjoining show one of these days, Nick. I like that idea. Absolutely, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I think you'd like Jeff a lot. He's a Mr. Personality. He's he's never unhappy ever, ever. It's oh. well, I can't. I mean, that's how you got to live your life. If you stay positive, more positivity comes to you, right? Hey, sometimes you have to be willing to punch your motherfucker in the face. And, well, that's. Uh, I, I mean, it, that it, how so happy do you feel though once you get to do that? <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm ecstatic. I mean, that's one of the best parts of life. It is. It is. That's why I miss fighting. I do miss fighting for that reason. Brian, do you have anything that you would like to uh, share on the closing statements? Well, I appreciate the opportunity. Number one, and uh, to Nick's point, uh, we'll be in in Belfast. We'll also be at the fights in Miami. 
Um, and so looking for, for any and all opportunities, anybody that's interested, uh, go to the app store and uh, type in Match Point Connection. Uh, and the, the logo will pop up, download the app. Um, if, you're a, if you're a talent or a business, uh, fill out a profile, sign up. It's completely free, by the way. Uh, so, so um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take anything to join. Just a little uh, little paperwork, little little uh, couple of questionnaires to to fill out, and you're good to go. And um, and that's it. So, sounds good. Sounds amazing. Really quick, one last question. Now that I'm sitting there thinking about it, once say I'm a uh, a fighter and I put a profile out on the app. How long does it go before my profile drops off because of inactivity, maybe? Or is it one that once you're on, you're on? Once you're on, you're on. We're not going to kick anybody off at all. Uh, we understand that, you know, you may you may have um, some times wherein you, you, you know, may go off the grid for a little bit. We're not going to delete anybody's profile unless they say they want to be deleted. So, gotcha. Well, again, Nick, Brian. Match point, guys. Check them out. Check the app out. Match point connection. Thank you guys for coming on and joining us on Combat Zone. We are here as always. Everything at bwsports1.com. And until next time, we will see you later. <laughs>